Hello guys, today we're going to do something that is quite exciting for a lot of you and for us too. We got the permission from the Sinkovich brothers, from Martin and Valent, the Croatian guys in the heavy double skull, to do a video analysis. We're curious what can we learn from them? What is it that makes this double so fast in comparison to all the others? <music> So, here we are. We've talked about this a lot in our own team and we would like to find out, we would like to learn from the best. But the point is, the best are not always the most efficient. And especially in the heavy man's classes, we used to have a lot of just raw power racing. This has all changed with the Sinkovich coming into place. So here I got a video of them from a crew camp. And something quite distinctive that we can see is their obvious work here towards the finish. And if you look at this quite precisely, you can see that they're doing something at the finish that must be a connection. What they do is they double up their masses. So let's go back a little and analyze this in depth. <laughs> So what we can see right here is that they are with their upper body at about the same forward lean. If you check out their legs, the legs come quite early. This means that they, they are not as efficient individually as they could be. But you can see that they're both doing it together. And their coach must have emphasized something that is quite helpful if we now go on you can see that both have quite a lot of force of, of body weight, trunk weight on their hands. So this, posi this position is quite hard to get rid of unless you're trained to do so. So what they're doing right now, they do a weight shift from their hands onto their trunk and seat back again while they're catching. Well, they have to move the upper body a bit in order to do so. So let's check this out. You see that there's now this going a bit forward and while they're going forward, they're now reducing a bit of the weight of the trunk to the blades and we can see that the stroke is a bit more cramped, a bit more tight in the shoulders than the bow. And the way they set the blades is almost perfect. So you can see that here there's almost no compensation necessary while the stroke does need to compensate a bit. If you're too tight in the shoulders, you cannot transfer weight easily from your arms to your seat. So therefore, he needs to cramp a bit. This is just a basic compensation move. What I mean is it's just about this slight cramping here. You can see the shoulders and the arms. It's the cramping that the bow does not have. But what both of them do very well is a solid leg drive. And this is what makes him so fast. They wait with their upper body. They load up the upper body all the way during a leg drive. And there's some phase, it's just about half slide where they are right now, where the upper body just kicks in. And it's not just the upper upper body, it's the full upper body. It's the hip angle and the hip angle is about here. And they open the hip angle um, at the same time. So you got the hip angle right here and then they open it at the same time. You can see that with the last part of the leg drive, they're really emphasizing the upper body work. And this is what makes them so fast. You can see that they're still covering, they're still covered their blades in the water, which means that they really are able to propel the boat around an anchored blade. Do they have a lot of lean back? Yes. But it's not the amount of lean back that is so important, so crucial for their boat speed. It is that they do it at the same time with the same effect on the boat. So let's go through one more stroke with them. It is the effect on the boat that they are able to synchronize, not the optics. So the preparation, we can see that both of them are bringing their hands 
forward a bit now and what they do better here is they wait with the legs a bit longer. There's some technical drill with early squaring of the blades. And you can see that while the bow is pretty good at, um, at keeping most of his weight on the seat, the stroke is not. So this is a quite uncomfortable position. You can see from this, it doesn't feel so good while the bow is quite relaxed and it's like this. So the stroke is almost like this bow is like this, it's more comfortable probably for the bow to row here. And you can see that the bow guy is still um, very relaxed, still has a lot of weight on the seat, while the stroke needs to use a lot of force here. This is more a, a power rowing style, but it's not necessary. You wouldn't have to use that much power if you stayed as relaxed, but it's easier said than to be done. Now with the catch, you can see that the bow is almost free of weight, so the hands do not have any extra weight. As he's more relaxed, he is much more capable of copying the stroke's movements. Probably this is why they put him in, in, in the bow seat, just my guess, I don't know that. So now it's catching face, and let's check it one more time. Now there's a slight compensation move, you see that the upper body is going upwards a bit, it's lifting, it's a slight cramping, it's a slight bending of the arms because you need to keep the blade in the water at a certain height but your upper body wants to go up because you just put a lot of weight on the blades in order to get the weight off the blades, off the hands, you need to lift up the upper body if you do it as late as the stroke did. So, and therefore, in order to keep the blade anchored at the perfect position which they are real to do, you need to compensate a bit. You see that the bow does not have to compensate. He's in a perfect position, but the stroke is not. But still, in a stroke position, he's able to compensate a bit, so the stroke could probably be more effective in the water and faster, and um, bring more of his power in the boat. But right now, this position makes it almost impossible. Still, what they synchronize is, with all this compensation going on, they start to build up pressure, not at the catch, you will see it later on, but here. This is where, the, where he too has to lift the upper body, which is owed to the fact that he used the legs quite early uh, to recovery. There's another round of videos, check it out, too, that explains it all. And now they're really starting to become synchronized in their effect on the boat. I watched a lot of their videos. From, from the first part, if you, if you check a force curve, um, so the force curve would mean this is the catch, the force rises, you want to have, usually you would like to have plateau and then to finish it just goes off. Standard force curves, if, you, if you're not used to um, check force curves, if you're not used to um, create a certain plateau during your rowing stroke in terms of force, look like a hill. You have a gradual build up and you have a, a gradual loosen of power. And this force curve is not very effective. What the Sinkovich guys do is they take a bit of time at the catch, so they have a gradual build up, and then they try to have more of a bulk of force towards the end of the stroke, which they synchronize. So they take a lot of time at the catch, because the catch is something that is quite difficult. You know that they're not too synchronized in the way they move themselves, and therefore not really capable of having the same effect on the boat at the catch. But after the catch, right now, this is a phase where they start to kick in force at the same amount, at the same pace, at the same time. And this is what makes them go so fast, because from now on, their drive is just one synchronized motion. So basically, they don't pull the boat, they more or less push with the legs, hold, load up the, the upper body, load up the pelvis, the hip they have brought forward, and then they just let it go, they just open it. You see that the arm work is not that emphasized as in other boats. Let's check this out. That, that lifting is quite a crucial thing and if you check there the bending of the oars, this is a good sign in heavyweight rowing, they're just about before the zero position where the hands are overlapping and the oars are bending. And this, is, this is great to see and look at this, the oars are still bending now and this is so crucial for boats. 
Individually, if you would row a single, this is the best sign you can possibly have. Bending oars at the zero position. Why? Because this is where the blade is in the best position to accelerate the boat. To recap this, we do not move the blade through the water. The idea is to anchor the blade, keep it still in the water and move the boat past the blade. But this only works if the blade sits still in the water. So no high change. Any high change will result in pop, 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 slip. We have slip with the blade through the water anyway, but we'd like to keep it as little as possible. And what they can do as well as no one else I've seen in this heavy double skull field, they're able to synchronize at least 50% of their stroke. And this is more than the others do, from my point of view. So yeah, they are strong, they're two very strong guys. But strength alone doesn't mean anything. I think there are quite a few guys in the, in the field and heavyweights who might be equally strong or maybe a little less strong or maybe even stronger. It doesn't matter. In a team boat, it's more important if you are able to synchronize this input. And usually it's not pulling you have to synchronize, it's the loading up of the upper body. If these were my legs and this were my upper body, what I want to focus on is load up the upper body and hold it. Many, if you check out the World Cup final in Varese, and I've gone to YouTube, and if you enter in YouTube, um, World War Cup Varese 2016, it's um, posted by Jerry Callisto, it's the user. And let's check out this race here and you will see what I mean. There's a difference. This is the start of the A final. And um, this is where the Q1s were a bit off, a bit back. It's quite a funny scene at uh, the start. So they had to change the starting pontoon. Okay, so this is the start and the Sinkovich brothers are doing something already. They're in there pushing and anchoring and lifting, anchoring, lifting, anchoring, lifting. They don't care about having high stroke rate and go out and cramp and just feel themselves going fast. They care about pushing together, opening the upper body together, pushing together, opening the upper body together. And this is what makes them go so fast. Check this out. The first 500, almost Every boat tries to stay with the Sinkovich because they know that the Sinkovich will be the boat to beat. And the point is to stay with the recipe that works for you. And the recipe that works for them is locking, opening, locking, opening, the anchor open. So again, I don't own the right um, to all the videos I'm, I'm showing you here. I just use it as a demonstration example. If you look at this right here, the Sinkovich are using the legs, opening the upper body, using legs, opening the upper body. The other boat that is doing this quite well and they will be fast in the last 500 too, are the Swiss guy. You see that they're not as efficient as the Sinkovich guys, but they're doing something. You see that this upper body angle and this upper body angle are quite different. So it means the potential for opening the upper body, opening the hip towards the finish is different. Of course, the influence will be a bit different. Sometimes if you have um, guys of different um, body size and body weight, um, you have to have them look different. But in this case, the influence actually is different also. They have the boat. And check this out. You can see that here the lean back is already quite far in the back. So the upper body is going more so that the angle of the upper body is almost like this, while the upper body angle here is like this. So. The bow is able to use his mass towards the, towards the bow, which is more effective, while the, the stern, the stroke, can only go downwards, which makes the bow go like this, up and down, which you do not want. Still, their effective phase is right here. Like the Sinkovich brothers, they're very um, keen on saving the upper body for the last part. So what they do is they drive, drive, drive and open together. They open a bit differently, but it doesn't matter. They still do it right. And this is rewarded with a bronze medal later on. You can be inefficient in the first 800, you can be inefficient in the first 1500, but the last 500, you probably will have used all your gas. Otherwise, you will have to have physics of, I don't know, two horses. I don't think that one should be enough. So another good picture, we see the Sinkovich brothers pushing, opening together, pushing, opening together. 
If you are under pressure like they are right here, it takes a lot of coolness and quite a lot of brain to stay within your rhythm. And this is what I admire about uh, Martin and Valent. They're doing this awfully well. You can see that they're still sh pushing with the legs and then open together. You can see there's a dynamic momentum, but not a rushed momentum. Let's go back to the Swiss. You see the Swiss are pushing, opening, pushing, opening. But let's go back a bit because this is very interesting to see. Check out the Swiss guys. Check out what, this, what the bow guy is doing. The bow guy is using his legs to recovery very early and as a result his upper body preparation is impossible to hold. If you use your legs too early at recovery, your upper body gets into a position at the catch that makes it impossible to transfer force. Look at this. It's, you see that the Swiss guy is actually shooting the slides in order to get his body into a position that is suitable for transferring force. And the reason is, in my opinion, that he used the legs too early when, the, when he brings the upper body forward at the recovery. So, see it once more, check it out. I will go forward not, right now, I will not be able to do slow-mo. Check out the shooting, the slides. There we go, got it. You can do quite a lot of inefficient things as long as you have something uh, that you do together well. And this is what they're doing. Yeah, also interesting, the Norwegian guys, they're not using their upper body dynamics at all. To, to me, at least, it seems like this. Still, it works, but the question is how long and will it be enough at the finish? If you check out this, they're using much smarter their body weight. And the Swiss guys too, they're still crawling here in um, third place, but you can see that they're also sticking to this. Even with shooting the slides, it's um, still more efficient because they have this leg drive opening together. Yeah, now we are at 1000. This is a good picture of it. You see that drive opening, drive opening. So let's have a word on the Polish. The Polish are using their upper body masses at different points of time. This is an optical synchronization, but not an effective synchronization. Again, just my point of view. It's, it's very easy to do a video analysis based on a race where you just want to be ahead. You can probably find something wrong with anyone, be the, the Olympic champion. But it's an interesting for us to learn from them, to see that even the good ones make mistakes, but what is it that they do differently than others that is so effective. So now you see that the Polish are running out of gas. Um, for them it's been quite a lot of work to stay where they are and uh, you can see that they have to work hard. For them it's a lot of work because they don't use their upper body weight by loading up the upper body and opening it. They are simply pulling and if you do everything with raw power it just becomes more tiring. The more tired you become the more you're prone to do mistakes. And you can see this, they're still with the leg drive. That's their principle. So every team boat needs to have a synchronization point. And that synchronization point, usually for my guys, is the hip thing. The hip needs to work together. The hip angle is right here. So you need to bring it forward together, pull the boat. You need to open it together after the leg drive or with the leg drive with the final part of it. If you're able to do this, you will be fast. So we're now approaching the final 250 and you can see that uh, the single witch brothers have already established quite a significant lead, although they were quite under pressure in the first 500, but the Polish simply were not able to keep up with them. I mean, still, they're the strongest horses, you've got to go there where they are, I mean this is um, tremendously successful where they are, still, there is a difference. And if you check this out, shooting the slides is no problem, it is a problem, but not for this boat because they have something they do together, but the more tired they become, the more obvious the mistakes become. You see that this is a lot of unnecessary work and still you can be fast if you find some fraction of the stroke that you actually do together. So we come to the finish line, you see that open water between Sinkwich 
and the Polish, the Polish ahead of the Swiss. And the Norwegians in fourth. And the question is, how do you find the synchronization point? What is it? And this is for every team both differently. But the principle from my point of view again is the recovery and the way you influence the boat. So there's a, a team boat synchronization and an individual efficiency. And instead of saying, okay, do this less and in a team boat, many coaches say, leave this out, don't do this, it, it disturbs the boat, don't do this. I rather focus on what to do in order what not, uh, instead of what not to do. So my approach is find a synchronization point, focus the, on this, get all your attention on the synchronization point, no matter how bad a race is going, this point always gets you back on track. And I think this is what the Synchronage guys are doing right. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And we appreciate your comments and um, please um, feel free to subscribe and um, let us know uh, your thoughts on the work. Thank you.